valuable handicraft is a result from each single thread wholeheartedly sewn and woven. Elaborately prepared, the threads show off their smoothness and luster from light reflection. The silk fabric is treated as a high-class textile, whereby time and era do not take away its charming value. It is a heritage which demonstrates cultural growth over the past 3,000 years, attached to the people's way of life, passing on from one generation to the next. Through the capabilities of the Thai silk experts who tirelessly conducted a series of researches, studies and development programs, a new Thai silk variety called Kosoko No. 11 or well known as the Golden Silk was derived. The new variety yields high quality silk yarn enabling the development of Thai silk products. To produce high quality silk, one requires fine and careful attention to production processes from the selection of silkworm races. The yellow cocoon Thai hybrid Kosoko No. 11, known as the Golden Silk, is a silkworm variety that yields specially soft and lustrous silk yarn with a fine touch. Mulberry is the main source of food for silkworms. Good mulberry variety, proper mulberry plot maintenance and practices lead to healthy silkworms to produce high quality silk yarn. Silkworms are fed on mulberry leaves throughout their life stages from hatching to maturing and before cocooning. At an interval period after each stage, the worms stop eating for one to one and a half days. This period is called molting. After that, the worms start to shed their old skin to enable the new one to grow and their bodies become larger. During the molting stage, farmers stop feeding the silkworms. They apply rice husk charcoals or lime around rearing trays or rearing beds to reduce moisture for proper rearing conditions. Upon the end of a molting stage, the farmers apply a chemical which contains paraformaldehyde 3% to prevent harmful pathogenic contamination. Rearing bed cleaning is an essential stage of silkworm rearing as mulberry debris and leftovers can be a source of disease accumulation and contamination. The farmers clean rearing beds or trays after each molting stage. Young silkworm stage covers the period from the first to third instar silkworms and usually each requires only one cleaning. However, from the fourth to fifth instar, two to three bed cleanings may be needed, depending on the rearing conditions and rearing seasons. Silkworms grow and enter four molting periods before they reach maturity. At this last stage, the mature worms are placed on mountage frames, of which type determine the number of worms per frame to avoid double cocoons, a form of unmarketable bad cocoons. A proper cocooning room needs good ventilation. To avoid urine contamination to the new cocoons during cocooning, clean papers must be placed under each mountage frame. It takes around six to seven days before cocoon harvesting time. After harvesting, the cocoons are sorted for high quality and free from the deformed and bad ones. Good and bad cocoons are packed and marketed separately at a reeling factory. All of the above elaborates the rearing technique for the golden silkworm 
or Kosoko number 11, which gives an average fresh cocoon yield of 28 to 32 kilograms per egg sheet or box. The cocoons are priced by their quality at approximately 120 to 130 baht per kilogram. This is regarded as a good income generating activity for farmers. Cocoons are then ready for silk yarn reeling process. Silk yarn reeling is a process whereby cocoons are transformed to silk thread. There are a number of reeling techniques which yield silk yarn of various quality. One of the reeling techniques that has been developed to produce good and high standard silk yarn and meet market demand is the Community Silk Reeling Factory as it gives high quality handicraft silk yarn. Reeling process at the Community Reeling Factory starts from cocoon sorting. Cocoons with cocoon shell percentage of not less than 18% should enter the reeling machines to derive a better efficiency. Sorted cocoons are boiled at a starting temperature of 65 degrees Celsius before bringing it up to 95 degrees Celsius. This allows hot water to replace air pores contained in the cocoons to dissolve gum more evenly over each cocoon. Silk yarn reeling at the community reeling factory is done through semi-automatic reeling machines. The sizes of silk yarn is controlled by an instrument called deniero in parallel with the control of the number of cocoons. The temperature of water in a reeling pot is controlled at approximately 35 to 40 degrees Celsius. To derive even silk yarn color, the water is changed regularly when it becomes darkened. Silk yarn derived from the reeling process will be graded based on silk yarn quality standards set by the Ministry of Agriculture and Cooperatives National Bureau of Agricultural Commodity and Food Standards. Raw silk yarn will then be made into skines whereby the re-reeling machine produces diamond cross silk skines. Each silk skein contains a standard weight of around 80 to 100 grams. This becomes raw silk yarn ready for marketing. For those customers requiring twisted yarn, this is possible at the community silk reeling factory. With a piece of equipment developed from a combination of local wisdom and modern techniques, Twisted silk yarn is produced to feed into the handicraft silk yarn market to meet the customer's demand. Silk yarn degumming or bleaching and dyeing is a process where the raw silk yarn undergoes gum extraction process. The degummed yarn is either bleached or dyed with desired colors. Natural dye stuffs are more popular and safe. For example, yellow from the Ke tree, red from lac, black from diospyros tree, purple from butterfly pea, light yellow from pineapple, and brown from beetle nuts, etc. The yarn dyed with desired colors is ready to enter the weaving process. Before arriving at a nice piece of silk fabric, weaving becomes an essential step that allows single threads to be beautifully woven into a pre-designed pattern. This is a process that highly requires skills, capabilities and patience. 
Fabric weaving requires two sets of yarn. Warp is the yarn stretched lengthwise. Its length depends on the desired fabric size. The warp can be stretched out or rolled into a beam attached to a loom. The weft yarn refers to that spun to spool and loaded into a shuttle that acts as a vehicle to bring the yarn to cross between the warp along its length in the weaving process according to the desired pattern. The development of Thai silk products requires an integration of highly valuable local wisdom and the updated information available in the textile industry in order to prepare a production plan that meets market needs. This is to add value to silk products and in return generate income for farmers. Some examples of silk products undergone systematic development process include the following. Pineapple Buds Silk Fabric is characterized by the distinctive use of warp in the shuttles and needles to knit the pineapple buds design. The fabric is perforated, light and gives a soft touch. It is suitable to wear as shawls or scarves. This is a result of a modified weaving technique that has put high value to the Thai silk weaving. Mutmi silk fabric is characterized by the patterns appeared as a result of a fine tie and dye technique. This is a highly valued intellectual property that needs to be inherited and further developed for its patterns and coloring in order to explore more market opportunities and to add more value to Thai silk fabrics. Yokdok silk fabric is characterized by the patterns resulting from embroidering the weft in relation with the control of petals to create patterns raised up from the surface of the fabric. The use of different warp colors gives the patterns its three dimension. Yokdok silk fabric owes its value to the promotion of traditional silk fabric patterns. This adds a high value to an ordinary type silk fabric and to preserve the local wisdom to adhere to the silk fabric handicraft and make it stay alive. Applied Mutmi silk fabric is specially made by using traditional patterns to be continuously arranged in a fabric piece. The use of natural dye stuffs in the tie and dye process makes this type of fabric distinctive that carries its beauty and preservation of the valued local wisdom while serving the farmers with good income. Leafy silk fabric serves new fashion trends very well thanks to the continued development of weaving, degumming, and bleaching and dyeing processes. This includes the use of key sets of equipment like looms, combs, which suitably fit the types of silk yarn and weaving techniques. This gives the fabric structure its softness, luster, firmness, and leafy when touched. This becomes a special characteristic of this type of fabric compared to others in the fabric markets. Leafy silk fabric has a high potential in fashion industries in both domestic and overseas markets. It enables the Thai silk fabric to acquire a reputation and obtain a market share. Tiny silk yarn curled its threads from generation to generation. The development of silk products harmoniously combined the knowledge, skills and experiences together with local wisdom. This makes the Thai silk products high above the standards, well recognized and smartly standing out in the world's fashion. And importantly, provides the Thai farmers a well-being with the skills, capability and talent to be inherited forever.